Okay. So the next slide. Uh, oh. um, glow barter chokes, borage, broad beans and sunflowers. Oh. And there's a buddlier in the background. I cut it down to the ground every year. And every year it just comes up and produces lots and lots of flowers. Then I cut it down again. It's kind of a focal point in the middle of the allotment. It's very pretty. So you do cut it right down to the ground, Marissa? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I'm going to cut mine back, but not right down to the bottom. I might do that. Um, now this is hot composting. I did talk the last time about green joannas, which Barbara has one, and I was looking into getting one. And then I found on Gumtree a really good priced one. And in fact, Michael helped me go and get it. And we somehow managed to stuff it in the car and bring it home. And I've been filling it with the suggested method. Carbon rich ingredients include straw, shredded paper, uh, small twigs and dry leaves and for nitrogen you can include glass grass clippings fruit of manure scraps weeds garden waste coffee grounds tea bags and farm animal manure um, on some of the links below it will give the kind of ratio but I'm afraid to say I've just been chucking in a bit of everything <laughs> not very scientific <laughs> It took a while to reach the required temperature and is now steaming and should produce compost in about three months. Uh, the permaculture site explains how to do this without a hot bin. Uh, there are different methods of doing it and I'm going to empty a large wooden bin I got from FreeCycle and make another hot composter with that. And I've got Polish allotment neighbors who just dig a very large hole every year and throw everything in there, but they're very energetic. I don't know that I could, I could, we did dig the big holes to lay the ponds, but I don't think digging a huge hole every year is, is um, going to happen. An ideal home, the link for that, gives a step-by-step -step account of how and which materials to add, mainly that one keeps adding both types of carbon and nitrogen rich materials, not just one type. And um, I've thrown in all of the blighted tomatoes and yeah. lots of cooch grass and all sorts of stuff has all gone in and hopefully will turn into really good compost. And I, I can recommend them. If you sort of look out Facebook marketplace, Gumtree, Pre-Loved, small ads because they're very expensive new but um, I got mine for well I think a quarter of the price new so I did well there okay so next next one. yes there it is okay. <laughs> I, I did take one of its steaming too but I haven't loaded that one up <laughs> okay so next slide those are the links hmm. Okay. There's some pictures. I let the leek, some of the leek go to seed, and some of the beetles are very fond of them. So I'll be harvesting the leek seeds. Next. Marissa, could you just, just go back one slide so I could take a photograph of it, please? Lovely, thank you. Grand. That's. Um, there he is living on the leek seeds. So this is the reflection on the summer's planting. And I thought we could all sort of reflect on what we've done uh, in breakout groups or if there's enough of us to do breakout groups, let's see. And this summer was quite strange down here in Bournemouth. We had a lot of rain and only 10 very hot days. So we didn't have to water which was just as well as we were still doing the rainwater harvesting system. That now has been done. Successes have been the lettuce, globe artichokes, runner beans, berries, 
cucumbers, loads of those, quite a few broad beans, beetroot and onions, and some peas, kale, cabbage, well the cabbage is really coming up now, and broccoli. Now the tomatoes all got blight. I'm doing some more in the greenhouse if, if, if there's enough summer there. The potatoes, I didn't manage. My poor cousin, he did so well planting them. I really made a mess of them. I did, we didn't manage to earth them up enough, so the crop appears to be quite small. So um, we'll have another go. I think we've learned what to do for next year. The purple sprouting broccoli just sprouted leaves and the chard ran to seed while still producing much greens. I'm planning to harvest seeds of the chard and send them to all friends as Christmas presents mm. and also to give away at my art stall at the Planet Perfect Festival. And um, I think there's just a few more pictures. That's um, mm. sunset over the allotment. You can see the different things, raspberries, blackberries and gojo berries. Quite a lot of all of them. Runner beans and rose campion. Got rose campion on free cycle last year and it's doing very well with the with the runner beans. Mm. A little beetle. Quite sweet. And cinnabar moth caterpillars. Don't have a horse, so I can allow ragwort to grow. They're, they're incredible ones. They have a pretty little moth, quite thin uh, wings. And the caterpillars are amazing. They climb all over the ragwort and um, look quite, quite spectacular. That's the potatoes under the straw and the brassicas, the cabbages and lettuce and broccoli and kale are all under the blue netting. 